Hello everyone and welcome to this very interesting edition of the Immigrant Magazine Weekly. I'm your host, Pamela Ann Chang. A woman is condemned to death after brutally killing her opponent in an underground street fight. What emotion does this stir in you? Well, that's the subject matter of a film produced by my guest, Iranian-born award-winning Hollywood director and producer, Khalili Dastan. His most recent action drama, The Way, addresses gender and racial roles in mixed martial arts, or MMA, as it is commonly called. Before I bring him to the show to talk about the subject matter and all his amazing works, do me the honors first, if you haven't subscribed, by clicking on the subscribe button here below and also liking or clicking the like button so that YouTube will share our videos. Don't forget to ring the notification bell, bling, so that you will be notified when this amazing content is released. And of course, follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Paman Chang and like us on Facebook at The Immigrant Magazine. Sit tight and let's welcome Kalili Destin to the show. So welcome to the Immigrant Magazine Weekly, Mr. Kalili Destin. I got it right. Yes, Destin. <laughs> Thank you. Pamela. So wonderful. So you were born in Iran. Yes. Where were you raised? Were you raised in Iran or were you raised here? Or one, you know, I know a lot of people that were born in Iran, but due to the political situation out there, were raised here in the U.S. Tell me a little bit about you. I had a very interesting background, actually. I uh, I was born in Iran. My mother is from Laguna Beach, California, so she was a uh, American. So I I went back and forth, uh, living in both countries in my very early years, going to both school systems, both kind of realities. And the revolution and the war happened. Went through that. Um, moved out of Iran uh, permanently at that point into the United States. But at that time, my mother had also moved into Hong Kong. And so from the age of nine all the way until my 20s, I would spend every year and summers in Hong Kong. So I had a very, very uh, interesting multicultural upbringing, um, both in the East and the West, uh, which, was, which really was fascinating and opened my eyes at a very young age to all of the variety that exists in the world and yet at the same time how similar we all are that's a really interesting perspective that would have given you really a very cosmopolitan eye view of the world very interesting but let me ask you growing up as a young man um and an immigrant uh, growing up here in the u.s your mom being american was she um like iranian um of Iranian descent or was she like Caucasian or Asian? What was it? What's your mom's heritage? Uh, Scotch, Irish and uh, Ashkenazi Jewish. Wow. So growing up, I was going to mosque, synagogue and church um, <laughs> with all different grandparents, families. So it was quite interesting. I, I uh, had a very interesting experience of the multiplicity of all of the cultures and the religions, um, which was fascinating. That is, that is fascinating. But as a kid, were you, uh, were, did kids tease you because of all this or did they admire that you had this diversity in you? No, I, I, it depends. I mean, in certain, when I was in the East in Hong Kong, I uh, got along with uh, the Asian children quite well. Um, in Iran, I was considered a countryman. In the United States, though, in uh, junior high school, high school, I was very much teased because of my last name, um, you know, being called various racial epitaphs and things like that. Yeah. And then when I entered the uh, entertainment business, I actually started as an actor in the theater. And someone said, hey, you should go and get into the film business. You're a good actor. So I went to L.A., uh, but everybody told me to change my name to Michael Angelino or something like that. Otherwise I'd be either a terrorist or a drug dealer. So I was like, no, I can dust on Khalili, no problem. But they were right. I was typecast endlessly. I appreciated the work of course, but that ultimately is what motivated me to make my first feature film actually <laughs> was, I was like, I can star in a movie, I'll have to make it myself. And then when I made it and went through that process, I was like, oh, I love doing this. I'd rather just make films, you know? So there was definitely that undertone that I was always pushing against, but motivated me as well. 
Absolutely. It's so funny because that was actually a question I was going to ask you that, first of all, what got you into filmmaking? And as someone of Iranian heritage, like most immigrants that are not necessarily of Caucasian um, heritage, well, you happen to have it all, but... <laughs> You know, you know, the American thing, a drop of blood from a different race makes you a different color, minority and all whatnot. I was going to ask you what motivated you to go into the industry and knowing fully well the challenges, you know, because there are lots of filmmakers out there that face enormous challenges because of their heritage and being typecast as actors or not even given the opportunity. If they are directors, producers or women, there's so much going on. What motivated you yet to do it and how were you able to navigate it? Well, the interesting thing is, is I was raised by my father was an immigrant and he came and became an extremely successful architect in the United States and married my mom. And they went back to Iran and had a flourishing business. And then my mom, an American, moved to Hong Kong and was an immigrant there and created an incredibly flourishing business in that reality. So I was raised with the example that there is no limitation, really. Yes, there are challenges, but those can be overcome if the passion, if the heart, if the drive, if the intention is clear and it's there. And so I never really thought about it. I, I got into the theater and I was like, I love this and I'm doing this. Now, when I was in it, all those challenges were quite difficult, but ultimately I uh, came from that kind of background that find a way and I did. That's amazing. And that's really the story of most immigrants. They create opportunities where they see none for themselves. So. That is a real good testimony. So now you have done really amazing work. I mean, you do documentaries, films, music, videos, theater. Why such a wide range? Um, you know, I'm open to receiving whatever project comes. My skill set is such that if I uh, decide to do a project, I will finish it uh, because I know how to. And so when I really tap into something that comes along, I, I go for it and I'm motivated by it and I remain open. Um, I've learned over the years not to be married to an idea of I have to be this kind of filmmaker, I have to do that kind of project. You know, I'm an artist and uh, I just love to create and do my art and grow and seek excellence. So all of it is welcome. That's interesting. So sometimes people tell you, oh, a lot of people are multi-talented, right? And they feel compelled to do one thing. But I see that, well, you have stuck within the film industry and in there, you, you know, you take the opportunities that come because one may lead to another, right? You just never know which one would, you know, I think that's what you're saying, right? Absolutely. And you know what I've learned over the years, Pamela, is that I'm actually not making the films. The films are making me. Hmm. And one is transforming me, giving me another layer, another learning opportunity towards excellence that feeds into the next project. So in a way, I don't approach it as this is mine. It's more like I belong to it and I'm being compelled to go on this journey. And that makes it a much more enjoyable process of curiosity to see what emerges instead of this kind of, I have to control it. And then the creativity really flourishes and the opportunities that come are surprising and lovely. Very interesting. And so that brings me now to this project, The Way. I see the backdrop there, The Way. Um, it's a very curious subject matter. I never thought about what could go wrong. It makes more, it's mixed martial arts, right? It's, it's actually underground street fighting. So okay. it's illegal. Uh, uh, club fighting underground, a bare knuckle fighting. Okay. But yes, it's a mixed martial arts and also introducing the spirit uh, aspect of martial arts through the practice of Qigong. Okay. So it's your, your film is an action drama yes. and it's about a woman who is condemned to death because she brutally kills murders her opponent. I don't even know what it's called murder because right. it's based on the rules. So you tell me, what is the story about and um, why is it so intriguing that you decided to make it? The story is about Jane, who's an underground street fighter uh, and really incredible, but tries to step away from the game uh, and create a family, but it goes wrong. And uh, she ends up in a fight and I won't reveal too much, but she ends up in the fight and, and, and 
brutally murders her opponent intentionally um, because of triggers. So she's condemned to death. When she goes on death row, uh, you know, she comes with that complete street attitude, that mentality, but she meets a Qigong master. And Qigong is basically the art of harnessing and developing the skill of life force energy through meditation movement. And so she learns and completely goes through this transformation and recognizes that death actually is a door and not the end. Uh, meanwhile, her boyfriend, who's a, 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 the correctional officer and part of the execution tie down team uh, has a completely different attitude. And is like, I'm gonna do whatever it takes to save you. And, and so she is trying to bring him into the realm of that consciousness as well. And the story really fixates around processing grief and helping those around you when you have an experience of awareness and how to support others, you know, to find that within themselves. Wow, that's interesting. So why did you decide to explore the story of a strong female in the context of an industry that is, um, it's vicious, it's strong. I mean, I, I'm not, I, sometimes I don't even, I can't even watch. And sometimes I'm watching and thinking it's fake, right? So I'm thinking, you know, they're just, it's just playfulness, but like based on this movie, this is real. And um, her opponent was brutally murdered. So are we giving her redemption here? Or what is the redemptive aspect? What are you trying to portray? Is it sympathy for the victim, sympathy for her? Because we're talking about a female, she's condemned. It stirs up terrible emotions in me to see a woman condemned to death. However, you said it intentionally killed her opponent because of triggers. There's so many nuances here that I can't even wrap my brain around. So you help me here. Well, absolutely. First of all, um, I'm happy to share the film with you so you can see it uh, if you have not yet. I assume you've only seen the trailer. Yes, I've seen the, the trailer. The, the fight scene is extremely brutal and we want to be challenged by it as an audience, you know, that's intentional. Uh, the, the root of it is, is that we're not giving her redemption. The, the lesson of the way is that you are totally responsible for your choices, regardless of what's happening. And Jane, creates her own redemption. And that's kind of the essence, the kernel of it. As far as a female lead goes, you know, I was raised by strong women. And for me, as I look at the industry and the world at large, the planet Earth, you know, all of these archetypes and these mythologies, one thing that I'm really interested in is bringing balance between masculine and feminine. And in that balance, then we can flourish. In that balance, then there is harmony. The imbalance is, is where there is sickness, where there is suffering. And the way and Qigong and these practices are the process of recognizing and cultivating that kind of balance. But this is a background thing. And so for me, it was really interesting. My previous feature is a documentary called Master, which we follow a Qigong master through China with his granddaughter. And he talks about his history and his art. And I had been reading a book by Victor Hugo called The Final Days of a Condemned Man. And I thought, wouldn't it be interesting if someone is in a situation of capital punishment, but in that process, they become conscious, what would that be like? And let's put it in a feminine role, because the feminine can be powerful, but that certain softness, that maternal quality, that openness, you know, that is so potent. And I feel untapped to help, you know, bring this kind of balance and awareness. So I'm very much about that. It is riveting. Um, the, the, the romance that you infuse in it um, kind of softens it a little bit. Why did you, you know, within the context of this whole disaster, gory stuff that happened, infuse that romance? Is that where, you, where she finds some kind of, are you humanizing her in some kind of way? What is that? You know, I'm always interested in, in love because I think that that's the... <laughs> root motivation and opportunity for human beings. Right. Really, you know, we want to see a story of love. We want to experience that. That's something we deal with in our lives, whether it's love for yourself, your family, your friends, romance, you know, so I think that's a very, very important and potent thing. And also it, it motivates you, it pushes you, it challenges you, it triggers you, it helps you grow, 
you know? So for me as a filmmaker, I love to see films that have love in it. And I make films that have love in it always. Yeah. I was also intrigued. Um, the aspects of race and representation in the film. Can you shed some light about that, especially in the context of the lack of that, you know, diversity, the way we want to see it in the industry? Well, you know, as I said in the beginning of the interview, Pamela, I grew up globally. Um, I, I always consider myself kind of a world citizen. <laughs> um, and that's just the way the world is. So that's the way I present my stories. I, I don't feel complete unless I have that in it. And I've grown to develop and hone that even more so. And it makes it so much more interesting and fascinating and true to have all of these multicultural diverse aspects to see the differences and yet how much the same we are. And that's very important to me because I grew up like that. And, and I feel I wanna share that. Yeah, the, it's, it's really interesting because we think about what we are going through today. Um, I don't know, is Jane, what ethnicity is Jane in the movie? Caucasian, she is white, but She's she white. comes from growing up in, I followed, uh, I won't say who, but I, I studied different people for the role and this a particular individual, amazing woman that I came across actually grew up in a black neighborhood and she was the only white girl. Mm -hmm. So she was in the minority and through interviews and processes and what that experience was like, you know, and I thought that's a really interesting um, um, piece to bring in because she comes with that kind of street element uh, from that you know, side of the tracks. Yet when she goes through this transformation, you realize how everyone is the same, you know? So that, this is a, these are the interesting things that I like to explore, all these little nuances just to put in there um, in the background as the story progresses. Yeah, I love I love it. I can't wait to see the entire film. Just the little bit that I saw was so it was gut wrenching for me. You know, it was really gut wrenching for me. And I'm just curious to, um, how did um, your your upbringing influence how you portrayed Jane? If well, I I tell you I'll tell you this. Um, I've been through quite a lot in my life, revolutions and wars and different things. I won't get into all the personal stuff, but for me in the process, being a th coming from the theater, I spent a lot of time with my actors rehearsing and developing the characters. And what I'm looking for and what we're always seeking is to get as close to the truth as possible. So that when people watch that, there can be rapport. There's a certain authenticity of experience where you're like, oh, I'm feeling it because they're feeling it. And so that's the approach, seeking and honing in on that. And that's really where you find the jewel so that when you the audience comes and watches it, they have an authentic experience because the characters are having that experience. That's interesting. I like that. I like that because here she is thuggish in a way. And then she has this loving boyfriend. It's kind of like... Rose role reversal here, you know. That's right. That's exact, and that was very intentional. <laughs> oh, you know? okay. Right. Yeah, because it's, it's 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 about bringing masculine and feminine balance because these pre-existing archetypes that have been in the mythology of storytelling and filmmaking need to open now, and they are to be like, there. Don't be so attached to that. We can all weave through these things. That's more focus of the on the human experience. That's more focus on that because we're all going through the same thing, really, just in different varieties. One of my favorite poets of all is Maya Angelou, and she said it so elegantly, nothing human is foreign to me. We experience it all, love, pain, hate, desire, need, want, cold, hot. This common denominator is what's interesting to me. So let's open up the archetypes of a man has to be this, a woman has to be that, and let's see the truth. We're all just human with our very unique aspects, of course. That is so interesting because someone told me, and I've heard this before, we tend to look at if you're spiritual, for those who are spiritual or Christian, whatever faith, we kind of see our creator, especially like for Christians, which I am. So most times we see God as the male 
in gender terms, you know, I don't know why we do that, but look at this film, right? So I, people that have a tendency to think, why would a woman be on death row? And we sympathize more. I'm just trying to think if this were a man and it was reversed and the woman was fighting for him, we are more inclined to say, oh, that's normal. But here you are presenting just a completely di different point of view, taking us away from our attachment to gender. But some will say you're trying, you're taking away our femininity some kind of way. Well, what I would say is watch the movie first and then see if I take away the femininity. And then we'll have to have that conversation. Yeah, because, <laughs> because that piece, that elegance, that beauty of femininity is very much ingrained in that character and that actress. It took six months to cast this film to find the right people to capture all of those things who brought those life experiences. So I would say that that is certainly something that I focused on very much as well. Okay, so the strong women in your life, I'm sure they influenced this. So um, I'm really looking forward to seeing the entire film. So what's the takeaway? What do you want audiences to take away from this film? Well, what I, the, the first thing is it's coming out January 4th. It'll be available for sale uh, on all uh, on-demand platforms. So please buy it and watch it. Sure, I can and, wait to see it. <laughs> you know, and, and frankly, I created the film so each individual has their own experience where they are. I'm not trying to force an idea. I'm saying, here's the world. These are my experiences. These are the human stories. Have an experience. Because if you're having an experience, for me as a filmmaker, I've succeeded, whatever that experience is. Okay, so you're not trying to change anybody's views in any way, shape or form. You just tell the story. That's it. And you take away. So yeah. the idea of the masculine man, the feminine woman, all of this is ingrained. This, you know, it's funny. We think that for a man to show that kind of love and devotion in some cultures, I'm from Africa, you know, it's like be a man, toughen it up. You know, you're not yeah. taking that away, but you're just humanizing these characters, right? Because we all know the truth, don't we? You know, we, we have our front, we have what we project, but in our hearts, we're all going through what we're going through, no matter how tough you are, what a man you are, if you break down, you cry, you know, it's all the, the human experience in that sense. So absolutely, I don't shy from that. I'm interested in exploring that and being open and vulnerable and just sharing, sharing that experience. And the way is when you take total responsibility for your choices, mm -hmm you're gonna be free. That's where the freedom is. Yes. So then she's no longer scared of embracing death. That's right. She sees it as freedom. I'll, I'll let the audience decide what she sees. <laughs> well, that's my takeaway just from chatting well, with you. <laughs> you know, I think, I, so. I, I think in my experience, it is definitely a transformation. Correct. And how does that apply to us in our daily lives? Because this is like a metaphor for what we go through in life. What's the message if for someone, you know, in any situation, does this translate into our lives? Absolutely. I mean, in the end, you know, life is brief. It's a gift. It's an incredible opportunity for experiences with a vast palette of pain and suffering, grief, joy, love, happiness, connection, beauty. It's all there. And we all have been given this gift and savor it, live it. And soon enough, you'll transition out. So live it well. You know, talking to you, is kind of feels like I'm talking to a guru or Zen master. <laughs> <laughs> this is, I'm just sharing my personal experience. I'm certainly not it. teaching. You know, yeah. my intention is never to tell people what to think. Yeah. What I do is I just share the way I live my life because everyone is their own guru, is their own master. You know, we're all capable of, of making those choices. That's what I believe. I think that everybody is it. You are it. You know, okay. if you want to to God through prayer and that's the connection and you feel that, then that's what it is. It's the truth. Absolutely. You know? It's just amazing. Uh, um, so what would you tell a young Dastan? What would you tell your young self? about life 
and where you are today. What have you learned that when you were younger, you did not know? I, I've learned to be gentler with myself, you know, and do the best I can and make sure that I really enjoy the process, have as much fun as possible, and do not take myself too seriously. Have a sense of humor, very important. And I would convey that and that's what I've learned because what is it about anyway, you know? Be joyous, connect, love, live a, live a beautiful life, have these moments, and then create or do whatever moves you, whatever your passion is, go for it. Why not? Awesome. So for more information about where um, our audience can find, maybe when the movie will be out, how to get the movie, is there a website? Yeah, the way movie.com or uh, on social media, Alliance of Light Film. So. Amazing. Well, I'm just going to tell everyone, go out there. This is this is a Zen movie, you know, it's, it's like when I read the summary and then I saw the trailer, I was like, oh my gosh, but now talking to you, you're so Zen that now I really want to, you know, pick up the courage to, to watch the entire movie and I will. <laughs> you will, you will, I think family, you will actually enjoy it and be surprised. The trailer certainly brings the action violence intensity uh, aspect of it because that is very uh, lucrative for marketing and it does have those elements certainly um, but it is ultimately a love story about family I love that. and I love love stories. Connection. I love love stories thank you so much and uh, good luck with the film thank but you. before we go maybe you had something to share with the audience I know you did tell me before we came on camera that you have a foundation you want to talk about it Briefly. Oh, yeah. I also uh, uh, I'm, have the, uh, the honor of uh, ru running a nonprofit foundation called Cal Earth, where we do uh, charity work for disaster relief and educate people how to build natural housing that works in harmony with the environment. And that's called Cal Earth and it's at calearth.org. Okay, wonderful. Thank you so much. So I hope that we, everyone will see this film and that it would help us in our journey the way the way i love it the way thank you so much and it's been a pleasure talking with you and i'm looking forward to continuing this conversation after i see the entire film you got it how about that thank you so much Pamela. you're welcome take care we've come to the end of our show thank you so very much for joining me today i would love to hear what you think about our discussion so please share your thoughts in our comment section or send me an email to publisher at immigrantmagazine.com. Now be sure to follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Pam and Chang and like us on Facebook, The Immigrant Magazine. See you next time on The Immigrant Magazine Weekly.